Hey everybody, before we start the podcast, I just want to say if you want to support us, we have coffee for sale. That's right, we have K-Cups, Fresh Grounds, Whole Beans, and an Espresso Blend. Also, we have a special breakfast blend that supports independent artists at IndiesCoffee.com. You can go there, you can subscribe to it. Everything goes to support the podcast on that, and it goes to support independent artists. So, please check it out. And support the podcast if you like. Also, if you really want to do a favor to the podcast, share, rate, and review all the episodes that you enjoy. We really appreciate it. And now, enjoy the episode. And now we started the podcast. That easy. (laughs) There we go. Thanks for doing this, Mandolin. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is really awesome. Um, I know, obviously, I've had Paul on and he's talked a lot about the stuff you're doing and it's very like cryptic, but at the same time, uh, it seems like you're moving and shaking and doing a lot of different things. And then I see the book comes out and you've got all sorts of things happening. And then we were just discussing a speaking tour beforehand. So we'll just get right into it. And I want to know a little bit more about this speaking tour and what that all entails involves. Yeah, so I teach leadership. I teach a I teach a concept called conscious leadership, which is basically bringing leadership back to what it's always intended to be, which is an inward journey. Um, leadership is um, over the last few years, I think um, people consider themselves leaders, but really they're just managers. And um, leadership really is about. Um, it's an inward journey. I teach a process called individuation, which Carl Jung, the famous um, psychologist had uh, coined as a term is basically your um, outer world is in exact harmony with your inner world. So uh, leadership to me is about self mastery and self awareness. And it's about having all areas of your life incorporated into your purpose and your mission and what it is that you do. Uh, because when you do live life with purpose, there is no such thing as balance. <laughs> That's not because if, if you think in terms of balance, one side of your life is always going to be lopsided. So um, individuation is about combining your relationships, spirituality, uh, your finances, your career, your purpose, everything into integrated harmony into the work that you put out into the world. Right on. Now, where is this tour going to be taking place? Oh my gosh, literally all over the world. So um, we are going to be speaking, like I have an interview coming up um, in Malaysia. I've got um, a speaking panel that I'm going to be doing in Singapore. Uh, We're going to be coming to the States and probably towards the end of next summer, uh, we'll be opening it up to go to Europe. So it's going to be international all over the world. That's crazy. Do you you already have dates booked for this, for this stuff? Um, every day, <laughs> we're just every day. It's like I open my phone and it's like boom, 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 boom. So yeah, it's like it's just like it's it's lining up. I got just the other day. I got uh, three magazine covers um, that we're gonna be in, um, and it's, which is really really exciting because I've never been on the cover of a magazine. I've been featured inside of a magazine, but I've never been on a cover before. So uh, you'll expect the first cover to be coming out in November, which is really exciting. So yeah, the dates and everything have just been been rolling in, and so once I have everything solidified in the schedule, you'll be able to see all those dates on their website. That's that is really cool. What can you say? What magazine covers they are? Yeah, um, Speak Up Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine, and uh, Influential People Magazine. So Entrepreneur Magazine, that's a pretty big deal, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so how- I, it was really crazy because um, honestly, it was it was really nuts because I wasn't expecting it at all. And um, on Tuesday nights, I teach a leadership workshop. And so right before, like literally like 30 minutes before we have to leave to go to my workshop, um, I get a text message saying, hey, the CEO of... Um, the CEO of Entrepreneur Magazine had reached out to my manager wanting to meet me. And I was like, you got to be freaking kidding me. And then she'd also told me about the other ones too, but I got a little bit more excited about the <laughs> entrepreneur just because I was more familiar with that magazine. And so anyways, I was like, you got to be kidding me. I was just kind of like numb and in shock. And I didn't really have time to 
process it because we're getting all of our stuff together to go teach. And so it was just, and so I didn't really, it didn't hit me until the next day. And it's just really exciting. Like, it's, it's just really exciting. I feel like life is just kind of like, whoo, coming at me. And it's like uh, things that I've never even, like earlier that morning, that was something that was totally out of my perspective. Like it was nothing that I thought about. And then here it was just in my lap. So it was really beautiful. Really yeah. excited. How long have you been doing this where... <clears throat> Sorry, how long have you been doing this? Where Entrepreneur Magazine would want to even reach out like that? That's that's the thing. I'm you're doing this stuff on your own, so I'm curious as to how long you've been doing it and um, where it all started. Who you know? I have been honestly like I've been. I know some people don't like the word hustling, but you know what? I've been hustling for um, about three and a half years, like nonstop. And the first few years of my um, journey it was slow you know uh, but that's and and when when most people get into entrepreneurship they think that you know because it's sold out there that that's how, that it's that it's easy you know if you do this you have this great idea you're gonna bring money in right away um, honestly the first couple years of entrepreneurship is really getting yourself out there and putting yourself out there as much as possible um, and not expecting much money to be flowing in in return. Uh, you're really doing the, gro the groundwork and the foundational work, which is what we did. We were we were everywhere. Like we put ourselves in front of everyone. Uh, we went to like every event. We were traveling quite a bit, um, spending tons of our own money, um, just making a lot of groundwork. And um, and honestly, even with the with the magazine, like for the last year, we've been. We've been putting ourselves out there more internationally just because we've been traveling. And uh, I'm not exactly even sure how uh, this woman came across me, but she somehow reached out to my manager and my manager reached out to me. So to be honest, I don't know, but I do have, I put a lot of groundwork in. So I have to say that's probably what it was. I have done a lot of work. <laughs> well, then how, how did you support yourself? Because I know you and Paul, like you sold everything, you've moved all over the place. I mean, I know kind of your story if they listen to Paul's stuff, but we can kind of fill them in. Um, I guess I don't know a lot about where you came from. I know where Paul came from, you know, the football player and all that good stuff, but what's your background? <clears throat> and then did you like, did you just turn things around from having a business or, and then travel the world and sell your stuff? Or has this always been something that has been part of who you are? No, honestly, like I never in my life saw myself where I'm at today. Like just, just never. Um, so small background. I have two children. Um, I'm 37. My kids are 21 and 22. I had my first kid when I was 14 years old. So, you know, you can imagine getting pregnant at the age of 14 years old, getting the news that you're going to be a parent. I thought my life was over. And when right, she was born three weeks before I turned 15. Um, and while I was in the hospital, it was pretty tragic and traumatic uh, uh, pregnancy. Uh, my parents and I got into a giant altercation and I ended up having to divorce my parents while I was in the hospital. Um, so here I am 14 or 15 now years old with a child and uh, no parents and no family. And at, so I had to struggle. <laughs> at 14, struggle. you're like, you're 14, about to be 15. You're all on your, like, not all on your own, but you have a kid with you at the same time. That's intense. That is crazy. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely crazy. And so when I, um, yeah, so when I divorced my parents, um, my uh, kid's father, his parents said that we could live with his family with them, um, which was a rocky road, uh, another rocky road. And so when I first moved in with him the very first day, like my daughter was very premature. So when I brought her home, she was two pounds, two and a half, two pounds, four and a half ounces. And so when we, um, I was breastfeeding my daughter in my room and I just kind of felt like, oh my gosh, I'm living with these people. I, I don't even know. I can never see my brothers and sisters ever again. I have no and I have no parents like you know I'm just like my life was just like just seemed so hopeless and right in that moment 
my um, ex comes walking through the room and hits me right across the face while I'm breastfeeding my daughter. And when that had happened, um, I start crying and his mom comes into the room and asks what happened. And I said, he just hit me for no reason. And his mom says, oh, well, you must have made him mad. So you can imagine how the rest of my life living with them was. <laughs> how long did you live with them under those conditions like that? Whew, a long time, like, you know, because I was just a sophomore in high school at that point. Uh, so I, I was a sophomore in high school, and then I went to college after high school. And then um, right after college, so I got my own place for a little while. Uh, then I had to move back in with them for about a year because after college, like I was like, I could not get a good job in the city that we were living in. It was a very small job. So I ended up, um, I ended up in that time I was able to reconcile again with my parents. So after college, I ended up moving back to Arizona or not back to Arizona, to Arizona. I was living in Washington state and I ended up going back to school again, got into the medical field. So I was working in the medical and dental field for a while so it was like, it was this whole journey. And then at the end of that career, I was doing really good. I, I was working as a surgical assistant and I was doing really good. But at that point I realized everything that I do from here is going to be a lateral movement. I've already made it to the top of where I can go. My income is not going to grow very much, if any, at this point. So what do I do from here? Do I just, and I'm still young, so what do I do? Do I continue to work into this job or do I go back to school again? And so for a moment I was like, you know, I'll just go back to school, I'll be a doctor. And so I went to um, the Air Force because I was like, that was the best way I can, that's the only way I'll be able to afford uh, medical school. So I went there and I started to contemplate after starting to go through the process of thinking about becoming a, a surgeon myself, and I realized, I was like, what am I doing this for? Like, why, why do I want to be a surgeon? Do I really want to be a surgeon for the rest of my life? And the answer was no. Like, the only reason I want to go to surgery is for everybody else because people will respect what I'm doing and I'll make good money. And, but I know the lives of a surgeon, and believe me, you don't want their, <laughs> their life. And so at that point, I said, you know, i got to get out of this job. Um, I got to get out of this job. I thought I was crazy. Everybody else thought I was crazy. I ended up taking a job as a uh, working in a, for a moving company doing outside sales. And honestly, it was the decision of leaving my safe career and going into a commission sales job that completely catapulted my life. It was the risk in taking something unknown. And in that is what sparked me into doing what I'm doing now. So that's, it's a crazy story. And the way you say it, you know, you kind of skip through that, like you're 14 with a baby and you made it through high school somehow. Then you're through college. Um, I mean, most people would think, I just got to go get a job and support this. And then you've got an abusive relationship that you're staying with these people for a good amount of time, it seemed like. Um, I guess all the way through high school, right? For sure. Mm -hmm. Is that right? High school high school and college yes yeah so i mean that's intense there's a lot of people that don't come you know come back from that a lot of people yeah. like it's just a it's statistic <laughs> you know so yeah. to to just to think about that is blowing my mind about how and then your mindset is like just talking to you now it's like you never really doubted that you'd be, okay, well, I'm going to go be a surgeon. I mean, how many people make it that far? You know, at that point, like, it was, it was, it was crazy. Like, when I had my daughter, one of the biggest moments of my life was um, once we got out of the hospital and I took my daughter to the doctor and she gave, uh, it was my daughter's first checkup. And I don't know why the doctor said these things to me it didn't make any sense um but she started to list off all these statistics that i was supposed to become you know that you know the statistics say i'm going to be living in public housing the statistics say i'm going to be on welfare the statistics say that um my relationship isn't going to last my um statistics say that um 
I'm not going to be able to finish school, all these things. And honestly, I, re I remember very clearly in this moment, I don't even know how many statistics she named off. Believe me, she named off a ton. But she started to name off these statistics, and my mind went completely blank in that moment. And I was like, I'm not going to be any of those things. Like, I'm not going to be any of those things. I'm not going to be what she told me I'm going to be. Um, and that mindset really did help me to push forward in life um, to make sure that, like, for me not to become those things. So I did, like, I got a job while I was in high school, while working in high school, while being in college, um, because I didn't want to collect welfare, so I was never on public assistance. But even though that mindset did push me far um, and gave me this, like, notion in the back of my head, I'll do whatever it takes to not become this. One of the things that it held me back from as well is because I was so afraid of judgment because of the way she was judging me in that moment, you know, and how society was going to judge me because of my circumstances. So it was like a double-edged sword for me. It did help me to push forward. But then on the other hand, I ended up creating a life for myself that wasn't mine. It was for everybody else. And one of the reasons why I stayed in that abusive relationship, the biggest reason I stayed in that relation, that abusive relationship was, was for so long was because I was so afraid that people were going to judge me for being a single mother. Man, and at 14, it's so impressionable, like that age. Um, so obviously, I mean, I'm impressed that you just kept pushing on, that you even finished school and then went in and, and like made it as far as working in the medical industry and then the surgery stuff. So what the com the commission sales job, I happen, I actually agree with you 100% because I was kind of forced into a position like that as well. And I'm, while it's tough and I don't ever want to go back and do it again, it taught me so very much about just everything and how the world works and life and how to figure out problems. They, there's no textbook for that. Um, there's no instructions. You just have to kind of figure it out and make people like you. And, Absolutely. You know, it, it's all about that. It's a, you, you know, you can lie your way so much for sales, but not consistently to make money. So, um, but to take that jump from a secure job into this, and then now you go into traveling the world and speaking or holding your workshops and all the different things that you're doing now, um, that's quite the circle of just different things. Do you think that, do you think that the, the road you went through from 14 with the kids led to your mindset of believing that you can do whatever it is that you want? Oh, you know, it's, it, you know, honestly, it's like still like, I'm still unraveling a lot of stuff that happened like when I was 14. I, so my book that just came out on June 30th is all about that story. It goes really deep into that story when I was pregnant um, and what that's taught me. And I had done a lot of healing and a lot of forgiveness and stuff around, around that time in my life because that had, hands down was the most impressionable year um, of my life so far. And Man, there was times when I was writing the writing the book and tears are just flowing down my eyes and my face and I couldn't even see the 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 screen on the computer but I'm still typing. <laughs> <laughs> and um I'm still typing and I'm just like letting it out. And there's so many things that I that year was just so important for so many um for so many reasons, but yeah, absolutely. In that moment when I had to tell myself, you have to do whatever it takes. You have to do whatever it takes. And for me as well, in that moment, it was like, I don't want my kids to ever have to suffer the way I suffered. And so it was funny, like when my first daughter, like we're going, like preparing her to go to college, everybody's always asking me, that's the biggest question. Everybody always asking, Mandy, how do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? And for me, I'm just like, what other option do I have? Like, there. what other option do I have? Do I just say, do I use the excuse I can't afford it, that I don't have the resources, we can't make this happen? I can use all the excuses on the planet um, because there's a lot of them. But for me, like, I couldn't use an, ex an excuse because for me, every day was about survival. 
I had to survive every day. I couldn't just not say I'm going to give up because I have this little child I have to take care of. So every day I have to show up. And so that mentality definitely has been something that I've carried on through my whole life. Like there's no excuses. And every single time I get knocked down to the ground, which I do several times, I can't stay there. I have to get back up. And so, yeah, that was the biggest lesson that I learned from being 14. Like you can't stay on the ground for too long. Like I'll let myself wallow in it for a little while, but at the end of the day, you still have to get up. And one of the questions I always ask myself too, when I get to that point where I don't want to go forward anymore, Mandy, at some point, are you going to have to face this? Like, well, yeah. All right. Do you want to do that now? Or do you want to drag that out for later? Like, no, just freaking, I'll just do it now. (laughs) And so that's what helps me get up off the ground. It's like, all right, you got to just do it now. So I just do it now. And that's how, that's how I've been able to get the success in my life and business was with that mentality. Just taking action. Just taking action. Like there's no, there's no waiting. Like that's the thing that like I think is one of my biggest pet peeves in people. It's like, I'm interested in something. I want to do something, but they're so non-committal. Like if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you can't have that mindset. You can't be non-committal. You have to be really good at making decisions in the moment. You can't say, oh, you know, I'm going to think about it. Oh, you know, let me, let me write a list out and a graph, but all the pros and cons, you know, you can't do that as an entrepreneur. Like it does, it, it, it will not take you very far. You have to get yourself off the ground and you have to make decisions fast. And, and do you find yourself enjoying, I call it like rolling the dice. I mean, your hustling is, I hustling describes what you've gone through and done perfectly. I mean, if anybody can use that word and it not be like just generic, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> so um but i mean do you find yourself enjoying like the thrill of doing your own thing and rolling the dice and just like okay i'm gonna see if it works oh my gosh yeah you get so addicted to for me i've gotten so addicted to the reward of taking the risk you know like before in life it's like the like before in life that fear comes up and um the sad, honest truth is most people are addicted to fear, so they just sit with the fear. But when you learn to accept that fear and just like let it pass through you, the magic that's waiting on the other side of that fear is so amazing because in your head, you've pictured this thing that you want. But what's waiting for you on the other side of that fear is much bigger than you could ever have imagined because you've just stepped into a whole new world. It's like, it's not like you can only imagine in your mind a world that you've seen before. But when you've passed through, when you like break through that threshold, it's like, oh my gosh, like I never thought that I would get a freaking call to be on, on the cover of a magazine. Not, you know, like, and not even just one, three, in, like, less than 30 minutes. You know, like, how crazy is that? Earlier that day, I would have never thought about I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought of that a year from now for myself, you know. But what was really crazy about getting those offers, I had one of the worst weeks of my life the week before that. And I was at the point where I was like, I just want to quit. I want to give up. I even was telling Paul. Let's just go home. I think it'll be a lot easier if we do this back in the States. Let's just go home. And I called my lifeline. <laughs> I was like, I used a lifeline. I called a friend <laughs> who was in a position like this um, three years ago. He lost every penny that he had. He was like literally struggling for food. And in seven months, he ended up making $178,000. And now he's buying and investing in property. At 27, he just turned 28 years old, super successful entrepreneur. And I remember him telling me the story. So I called my friend and I was like, all right, I need you to tell me your story again when when you did this, because this is where I'm at right now. And he like just gave me his helping hand, got me up off the ground. I was like, all right, I do have a little bit more fight in me. And that day is when I got the offer. That's awesome. That same night. You've been writing the book the whole time? 
Um, so the book has been in me for several years, and I was so afraid to uh, share that deep of my story. Uh, but then I got a push because of this event that I'm doing in January that they need me to write the book. And so I ended up going to the Philippines and hunkered down for a month and wrote the book in, in one month and shared that the most vulnerable uh, side of myself in this book in a month. <laughs> now that that right there takes more than I think people would even realize. Like you think about it and they're like, well, you know, you're telling your story. That's so amazing. You're being super vulnerable um, in sharing that in a book that anybody can pick up, any passerby, any judgment from anybody reading that book, like all of your mistakes and your decisions and, you know, even the decision to move to Bali, you know, just whatever. People are going to read that. They can ju- they're going to judge it one way or the other, you know, whether they're going to be inspired, whether they're going to say, wow, what a crazy move. I would never do that. Um, what kind of person gets pregnant at 14? Uh, feel sorry for you all the different emotions are going through that that's how vulnerable that is writing that and putting that out in the world there's nothing there's there's just nothing more powerful and nothing more healing than putting a book out there into the world and i i feel like just i i feel like everybody should do it um for me i i thought that i was writing like, when i first started the book i thought that i was writing the book for the audience and i absolutely was not writing the book for the audience i wrote that book for me um even if like even if nobody on the planet ever reads that book that book was for me i um yeah i put myself out there a hundred percent and that was the biggest that was the biggest step for me to overcome that fear of judgment uh, because I still had a little bit of that in me and I didn't realize and so for me to put that out there and just say hey this is me raw and real um, and to be able to put that on a global platform was like no I'm showing up for me not for you I'm showing up for me and that's what this work is all about like people get confused with like b- being a speaker or being a coach or being you know, all these things they think it's about service to others it's not it's about you and your own journey and so every single time i step up and i talk or write a book or teach a workshop or whatever like write a facebook post th- th- those are all for me <laughs> <laughs> do you share your story there in like your talks and uh in your workshops and things like that do you share those like intimate details with those people I absolutely do. Um, that's the thing that when I talk to uh, leaders and coaches and um, business owners, uh, that topic of vulnerability always comes up because people are really afraid to share like vulnerability because they think if they're going to be on that platform, that they need to they need to be seen as a uh, powerful player. They can't. They, they they have to be seen as though they've already overcome all of these things, and that is cannot be further from the truth you know you talk your walk you don't walk your talk right so you whatever it is that I'm going through that's what I teach and I don't teach people you should be doing this you need to do this this is how you do things absolutely not all I can all I can do is share from my own experiences and my own stories and from other people's stories and you can take that information and apply that to your own life and figure out on your own how what to do with it. But I'm sure as hell not going to tell you what to do. And all I can do is share from my own experiences and my own vulnerability and my own pain. So what do your parents think now? I, didn't, I don't know if you I know, wanted to ask that question because I don't know what the relationship is. But I'm playing this story out in my head and it just hit me like, what? what how's that come? Because I imagine... I'm I'm putting myself as a parent in their position, mm-hmm. you know, daughter at 14, getting pregnant. Yeah, I'm not going to be the happiest, you know. I'm not going to be the happiest with that situation. Now I can't tell you that you know I would go crazy or anything, uh, but at the same time I can't blame any parents that do. So I'm looking at Absolutely. it like I'm looking at it like what do they think of you now after you've gone through all that and passed it. You know, it's like, so I don't really have a relationship with my, uh, with my mom, um, anymore, which is a good, which is a good thing. And it's not because I'm upset with her or blame her for anything. Um, you know, some people, some people are good for you and some people aren't so good for you. 
So I had to make the decision. Um, at one point, I had to ask myself, okay, you do realize, you know, this person's not going to change. Is this person serving the person you're becoming? And I had to make the decision that the answer to that was no. So I don't have um, a relationship with my mom anymore. But what was really funny, when um, I first started my business, my mom sent me this text message. It was a really nasty text message. And basically she said, you're a joke and your business is going to fail. Like basically that's what she wrote. And in that moment, because you've already kind of got an idea of what my mindset is, well, I'm going to prove this bitch wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like, so it was like, I'm not a joke and this can't fail, you know? So that like, so for me too, like that, like just to spark my mind, that competitive nature. So, um, and one of the things that I was really afraid of, uh, when she, putting that book out there was her and my, my kid's father. I was like, oh my gosh, because a lot of the pain that I went through was, you know, due to, the abuse that I endured from those two. So I was really afraid to put that out there because I felt like I was kind of, for some reason, protecting them. But I realized I can't do that anymore. It doesn't matter how they perceive things. Uh, it doesn't matter how they like what I have to say or whatnot. At the end of the day, they have to face what they've done and they have to face their own demons. And if this book helps bring that out in them, well, then you know what? I'm really happy I put that book out there. So that's for my mom. For my dad, we've definitely uh, done a good job in healing our relationship. And just the other day, my dad told me how proud he was of me. And um, and But it was really funny because when I got my book, I was afraid to send my dad the book link for him to buy the book. So I was afraid for him to hear the story from my perspective. Um, but... Yeah, so my dad is very supportive of what, what I do now, so it's exciting. That has to feel really good when your dad is like, hey, I'm proud of you. You know, it's it's come that far. Um, I do understand totally the mom thing, and there are certain people that hey, sometimes they're not good for you in, in your life, and um, if they are, they're going to be around, and if they're not, then they'll go away. And... Uh, especially if they're mean or degrading or saying things like that to you, um, it doesn't come from a place of honest criticism. It comes from a place of like jealousy and just wanting to see somebody fail. Uh, I don't know how a mother can do that to her own kid, but I don't know how. And then again, I don't know how anybody can do that to anybody because I just don't think that way. So. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, and, you know, I mean, and that's exactly how I got pregnant at the age of 14, you know, you find, you know, it's like something I've dealt with my whole life, and then you find, you know, this guy who is much older than me who tells me how much, you know, oh, you're, he has some kind of interest in me, and of course, it's like, you're going to do whatever to, to find that love, to, you know, to receive that love. And um, you don't you don't just get pregnant at 14 because you had a happy childhood. You don't just sit in an abusive relationship because you've got a lot of self worth. You know you don't you don't do that. Um, and that that just doesn't happen. And but hurt people hurt people. You know. And so I had to really I had to really take a step back and look at the world from uh, I had to take a look at the world through my mom's eyes and what she's gone through. And I had to just really, that's how I forgave her, was by sitting there and looking through the world through her eyes. And, you know, she's a hurt person. Um, and that's the, and I, I really love to share that story, too, because I think a lot of people, when they're going into entrepreneurship and they're about to change a direction in their life, they get so attached to family and they get so attached to what they think and what they feel. Um, and it prevents them from... From moving forward and I have to say that it's just a story you know because in my in my mind I didn't have parents who were like oh no you should do this because you'll have a great future I had parents that were like everything you do is gonna fail you're not good enough you know so why do it it's the same thing but at the end of the day it's just a story yeah it's just well it's somebody else's opinion of your story absolutely you make your own story. Like that's what I love most about this whole thing and listening to what you're saying. It's like it inspires me. Um, it makes me feel like, man, I need to buck up a little bit and look at the world a little different. You know, I I listened to um, one of the best things was that David Goggins book, and I don't necessarily agree with everything that he does, 
but he did like the way he puts it in the mental strength to be like hey suck it up like life is hard life sucks sometimes you can either sit there and wallow in it or you can face it and go bring it on and that's like you've got that same mental attitude it's in a different way in a different form you know you're not a navy seal out there kicking <laughs> butt every day as far as like physically in that uh, sense but mentally you're in the same place he is like you're in the same exact place you're cut from the same mold uh, and that's so impressive and unique and i think that's what like if i know the book's going to be successful i think that's what got you your cover you know whether people know that story or not it doesn't matter like your mindset is what matters not the getting pregnant at 50 you know you don't want people to go get pregnant at 14 to try to be famous. Oh God, no, don't, please don't, don't live life by my lead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, this is, you're an outlier when it comes to making it that far in that situation. It makes it impressive, but it also gives people the belief, I think, that where they're at in life doesn't have to be where they have to be in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and it's funny because I'll tell my clients that it's like, do, just do it. You know, well, Mandy, it's easy for you. I'm like, okay, let's just go back. I spent 15 years of my life getting my ass beat. No, it's not that it was easy. Like, it's not easy. I had to practice doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. Could you imagine me? Could you imagine me getting these opportunities and saying, no, I can't do this. Oh my gosh, I have to get in front of, I got, I have to go stand up on stage in front of a couple hundred people. That's scary. Let me think about it. Turning on, uh, turning down opportunity after opportunity after op opportunity because I just need a moment to let my fears um, take over. Like, absolutely not. It's like you have to practice just taking action. And at the end of the day, like, if there's really only one key to success, it really is just taking action. Life is a journey, but the thing is, is everybody thinks that it's about the destination. You don't get to the destination by not living and falling and getting cut and bruised along the way. You, that's part of it. That's actually a bigger part of, than the destination. Because even when you reach whatever destination you think you're going to, there's always another higher destination and you have to continually to go through that process over and over and over. There's no end game. The end game is death. So if you want to just continue living that mindset, well then just die now because that's where you're headed. So you might as well just take the action that you need so you can start opening up bigger opportunities for you. And like sometimes like you'll hear in my workshops, it's like, what does success mean? It means to be comfortable. What do you mean? Who here wants to live to be comfortable? Let's just be honest. You've been living comfortably in your suffering for years. That's what you're constantly achieving for. So just suck it up and just take the action. You know, put yourself in in risky situations. Spend the money that you don't want to spend. Pick up and quit your job and travel around the world and start your own business. Do those things now because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. So you might as well make the decision to do it now. 100%. I couldn't agree with you more. And and I came from, uh, I went from being free like that to having the mindset of I've got to be locked into something to now, uh, thanks to my wife and the people that are surrounding me now, um, in that same sort of like picking up steam again and being more free, uh, relaxed, rolling the dice and I'm happier than I've ever been in my life and I credit that uh, like it's I, I step, stepped back the other day and just looked at everything and went how crazy the ups and downs but then the gigantic spike that's happened in my life because of uh, I mean not had anything like you you know going through but I've had some bumps in the roads and pushing through those and in the moment, not thinking that they were ever going to end. But then, but then it's like, oh, hey, here's this wonderful woman that I meet. And then, oh, wow. Like, she's encouraging and just life goes skyrocketing up. And the people that were toxic, I kind of just like, let, not like told them to take a hike, but I just kind of, we just kind of parted ways because I went on a different path. 
And it, I just, I think so many people can do that. And no matter what their situation is, whether it be, you know, relationship troubles or a situation like yours, or even in business, like in business and people are struggling and they don't know what to do and don't know where to go, or they have a job and they don't like it. And they're sitting at a desk. I think Paul put it perfect. He's like, school systems are training kids to do stuff they don't like by making them sit there in at a certain time frame from this time to this time. And that's the same amount of hours that you work in the day. And so they're like training you for this sort of situation when it doesn't have to be that way. Oh, ab- absolutely not. And that's exact. that's exactly what the systems are made for. Like every single system is made to, to just to uh, set you up for another system. And there's, I mean, let's just be honest. It's not like this is this is the easiest way, and it's definitely not for not for everybody, you know. But but you can create whatever it is that you want in your life, like whatever you know. It, you can create it again if you just change your mindset around it and you decide to write your own story and you decide to do things your way. You know, there's a lot of things when you get creative and what it is that you can do in life. And you know, for me, I, I had to do that. You know, I, I was really sick and tired of living my life for, I was really, just for everybody else. And at some point, I had to make the decision to take control of my life. And, uh, you know, if, and for me, I've got, my daughters were a big, big thing, you know. And uh, I was like, oh, when my kids are, when my kids are older, when my kids are growing up, then it was like, okay, well, now when my kids are out of college, I was like, okay, it was just using the excuse, but I was just like changing the words around a little bit to prevent me from doing what I wanted to do. And so finally I was like, no, I got to do this now. And so, yeah, I just made the crazy decision. So, okay, we're doing this. And um, so how did that in the process? How did it, how did it start as far as I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I wanted to know how it started. Like when you decided to go on this speaking, like, that you wanted to coach and do workshops, did it work into it slow or did you just go, man, I really want to do this and just start. And then how do you start that and get clients? Like, I mean, you can't just put a post out there and do people just show up. I know people think it's so easy to have a really good Facebook post and then people are going to come to them and show up with clients. It absolutely does not work that way. Um, yeah, so for me, it was really funny. Um, I ended up going to this event. It was like the first three-day event I've ever been to. Um, and I can't remember. I think it was a T. Harv Ecker event. I can't remember what it was called. But anyways, we were at the event, and I was sitting there, and I was just kind of witnessing how everybody has these dreams like, everybody has these big dreams, but nobody's doing anything with it. They're just talking a big game about their dreams, but they're not doing anything. And especially when you go to events, everybody is, like, peacocking with their, you know, like, how, but they're not doing anything about it. And it was, like, kind of frustrating me. Like, it was, like, the most irritating thing because you could tell everybody was um, pretending to be more successful than they were. So in that moment, I decided, you know, I really would like to help these people um, turn their dreams into fruition. I would like to help them to do that. So I had the idea to create a mastermind. So, um, and that's just how my brain thinks. So when I have an idea of something, I just go for it. So, um, I decided, you know what, um, I'm going to create this mastermind. So I got a bunch of people's information and, um, I was like, all right, so we're going to take these dreams. I don't want, I I was like, I don't want everybody to leave this event thinking that then just going back to normal life. I would like to help support people who would like to go further. So anyways, I ended up having this mastermind at my house and 30 people show up at your house at my house in my living room. So like I like had to move furniture around and my living room wasn't all that big. It was so crazy. I, I had a friend of mine bring in chairs and stuff from her house and whatever. And so we just had everybody like literally just like crammed into 
a house and I had a friend of mine who knew the speaker and I had him come in and speak on dreams and things like that. And um, I did that mastermind like every other week at my house and it was like really super successful. And then like after doing that mastermind for a while, what happened was I had a ton of people who were really looking up to me. They were like really looking up to me. Um, but they still weren't really doing anything with their dreams. They still were just like, they ended up just kind of putting me as, like, as some kind of idol for them. And I realized that's not what this is about. It's not about me having all the answers. It's not about me being an idol. And so I was doing that for a while and I started thinking, like, what can I do with this? How can I push this forward and make this a little bit bigger? And then um, a few months down the road, I was at another event and I was having, having a conversation with a business coach and kind of telling her about my background and things that I was doing. And she's like, why aren't you doing relationships? Everybody is coming to you about relationships. Why don't you help people in that arena? That's what everybody wants. And I was like, and I was kind of looked back. I was like, yeah, that is what everybody has been asking me for, for like several years, even though I wasn't charging them for it or anything like that. Um, our relationship, because we had a long distance relationship, um, uh, were naturally following us because of that. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to start coaching people on relationships. And that's kind of how, like, so that's kind of like the beginning of how that started. I ended up hiring a mentor. Um, you definitely have to hire a mentor or some kind of coach or something. You definitely do not want to do this on your own. Um, and so, yeah, that's how my business started in the beginning. And then it just kind of evolved from there. It sounds like you just kind of kept adding and removing and adding and removing until you figured out this little groove that you wanted to be in and who knows that may change too because you're constantly evolving into where this takes you you can't sit still otherwise you become that generic inspirational speaker i guess huh oh a, a million percent oh my god it was the funniest thing we witnessed yesterday it was freaking hilarious we were at the gym and there was this guy who was like walking uh, with his phone and you could tell he was doing some kind of motivational like video I'm not even exaggerating when he did the video over and over and over for 40 minutes <laughs> and we were just dying we were all dying like dying I'm like what the heck is this guy doing like over and over and over look the world doesn't need your motivation the world doesn't need what's in your head the world doesn't need or want any of that. The world is so sick and tired of people pretending how perfect they are. The world doesn't need any of that. The world needs you to freaking show up. So if you do want to be in the industry of being a speaker or a coach or a motivational speaker or whatever it is, you know what? The key to it, honestly, is just showing up and being yourself. And honestly, it's like just show up. That is how I grew my business is because I just constantly showed up. My message evolved. I didn't know what my purpose was right away, but every day it wasn't the, the question in the back of my mind every day was, wasn't how do I figure out what my purpose is? How do I live my purpose? That was never a question in my mind. The question in the back of my mind is what more can I do to show up? And the purpose evolved with that. I never thought about what my purpose was. And then all of a sudden it was like, I got into such a groove and I found out what I'm so passionate about. Now when I teach and when I speak, and what I like when I whatever I do, it's just the passion now just naturally attracts people and I don't have to hustle anymore because I'm so passionate about what I do. So get that idea of what is my purpose, what am I here to do? Just show up and it'll naturally evolve for you, which is how I grew what I did. Authenticity. Like That's real it. yeah, really believing in what you're talking about, what you're saying, what you're doing. That bleeds through in everything. Like you know, if people can fake it till they make it all they want, um, if they're not authentic, then it's not going to work. It's going to be short-lived, you know, for the most part, I think. Um, a, mil a million percent, a million, a million percent. You know, it's like, it's, I'm not like, I'm a great speaker. I'm like, I'm not going to downplay the fact that I'm not a really great speaker, but honestly, it's not because I'm a good speaker. Uh, I say, um, you guys probably hear it here. I say, um, a lot. I say, you know, I say, you guys, I stutter with my words sometimes. Like, oh, I don't know what I'm about to say. But the thing is, is because I show up and be myself, 
people are captivated by that and they're not listening to my imperfections. Believe me, there's a ton of them. <laughs> oh, just recording yourself? Oh my goodness. Uh, it's actually made me a better communicator. I've noticed the things I say less of now. I used to say the same words over and over again, like awesome is one of my favorite words. And then my wife's like, you say that a lot. And I listen to it and I go, I do say that a lot, like way too much. <laughs> it loses its meaning, you know? So learning to be a better communicator, how to make conversations flow. And uh, it just helps you get to know people better as well. All that good stuff. But uh, recording yourself and listening to it again. And, you know, you say, um, um, oh, I need to stop saying that so much, you know? But at the same time, not worrying about it because you're still being you. You know, you're just trying to be a better version of you with each little moment and tick and like, okay, what can I say that's me that's not um? <laughs> you know, a, a really beautiful example of this. Um, see, I just said um. <laughs> uh, a, really, a really beautiful example of this is Donald Trump. He is a terrible speaker he speaks gibberish we have no idea what he's saying but at the end of the day he is just himself yeah like that's the that's there is no like there's no denying who he is and he doesn't show up every single day trying to be what the what the world and what the americans want him to be he honestly just shows up and he's just himself <laughs> yep he is. He just shows up. He's like, I'm Donald Trump. I'm Donald Trump. I'm not going to listen to my advisors. I'm not going to be this person that you want me to be. I'm not going to be any of that. And that is what's made him um, a very successful, unfortunate leader on a global platform. Not because he's got all the right things to say. Not because he's perfect. He's doing it on, you know, on an extreme shadow side. But it works either way. It works in a good way and it works in a bad way. At the end of the day, people just want you to show up and be yourself. And even though like every day sometimes he says things and it's like still shocking and surprising, on the back of our mind we're like, honestly, it's not that shocking and surprising because we expect him to be this way. If he actually showed up and acted in the way that we would like him to show up, that would be a bigger shocker because we're like, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, We'd be even more afraid because we're like, he's hiding something. But he's not hiding anything. It works both ways. So if you really want to become a success and if you really want to have yourself and your brand and your business blow up, that's a really good example of how powerful it is to just show up and be yourself. Yeah. Just, I think it's refreshing. People liked it because it's refreshing because they didn't, they weren't listening to some sort of politician tell them what they think they wanted to hear. And, you know, behind the scenes, they go back there and they're just saying, oh, that, 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 you know, blah, 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 blah. Look at that. I killed it. But, uh, you know, I don't really believe in any of that stuff. What a bunch of idiots they are in the crowd. Donald Trump calls them idiots on stage if he wants to or on Twitter or whatever. And then he says, I'm Donald Trump. This is who I am. I'm here. No. Vote for me or don't vote for me. I don't give a crap. <laughs> yeah, and, that's how it works. But I mean, if you do that as a human on an everyday basis, then people know where you stand, they know where you come from, and they're drawn to that. They're drawn to pe everybody's drawn to people, maybe not exactly Donald Trump, but they're drawn to people who are authentic and that believe in what they say. One of my favorite favorite compliments that I've ever received was from a friend of mine who said, you know, Manny, the reason why I really like you is I never have to guess who you are. It's like He's like, it doesn't matter what situation we're in, you're always the same person. Like, I never have to guess who you are. That's, a, that's awesome. I'm going to say my word. And, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and that, it, it's honestly, that's what it's about. Like, I, I'm not going to be a different person in my relationship than I am in my business. I'm not going to, you have to take down those masks. The people who, there's, there's a very small amount of people on this planet who make it to the top. And the people who make it to the top, they're really, really good at being themselves. They're really good at it. I, I, I study, like, I study celebrities 
I study, I study leaders, I study celebrities, I, su- I study people who've made it to the top. And I look at how they act and what they say and what makes them special, what makes them them. And at the end of the day, the one thing that they all have in common is they're really, really good at expressing themselves and they don't hold it back. They're not afraid of judgment. They're not afraid of being accepted. They're not afraid of perfection. They're not afraid of being embarrassed. They're not afraid of any of that. They just know who they are and they share that with the world. And that's what makes them great. Like your book. And most people don't do that. Most people don't do that. So most people just live in the little small world of the matrix. But the people who want to really push out of the matrix and live in like the big, amazing world are people who aren't afraid of being themselves. And that's the thing, too, with especially with people who want to be in this influ- the, the, like the influencer leader space. You know what? I think to be a good leader... I have to do what everybody else is doing to be accepted. It's like, no, you walk your own path. That's what leadership is, creating a path that's yours, and eventually you look behind you and a bunch of people are following you, and you didn't even realize because you decided to take the path that nobody else decided to take. That's what leadership is about, and that's what it means to grow your influence, and that's how you build something great, is by doing something that nobody else is doing. And what nobody else is doing is being themselves, and nobody can be you. Nobody else can be you. So build a brand and a business that's you. I love it. It's awesome. Well, what do you want to share with everybody? Where can they come see you? If you have any dates, tell everybody now, um, because I think it would be beneficial for anybody to go see you talk, hear you, have conversations with you, buy your book, tell everybody where can they, they can get all of that stuff. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we've got a workshop, not a workshop, we've got a leadership retreat that we're doing in Bali in October, which is all about really getting you connected to you uh, and who you are and your self-expression and how to tie that into your business. Like this is, I'm really super excited for this retreat because it's, I call it an, an expansion experience, not just a retreat. It's an expansion experience. It's, it's helping you to expand into that person you're becoming. If you really want to catapult your brand and your career, you definitely want to come to the retreat in October. And all of that information about where you can buy or to buy my book and information about the retreat, all of that stuff is on my website, which is really easy. Just www.mandolinmoses.com. And then your Facebook page, you want people to go there. Um, absolutely you can get me on facebook instagram everything is really easy it's just mandolin moses so you can look me up on facebook and um yeah i've got tons of content and information there we're we're about to relaunch a new youtube channel which is actually going to be me expressing myself in a much bigger way that i've been a little afraid to uh come out and share with the world but i've got to take my own advice and swallow that pill And so you're going to be seeing a much bolder version of me on YouTube. So I'm really excited to be watching that as well. I love it. All right, everybody. Go check out her book. Go check out all the stuff she has to offer, the dates. Follow her website. Follow her Facebook page. Keep in touch. And um, Mandolin, thank you very much. I really appreciated this. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This is a great way for me to get my day started. (laughs) Right on. Right on. (laughs) 